All right, 10, 20, 15. This is going to be a long one, so bear with me. Doing back today. And this is my son. He came out to work out with me. This is our warm-up routine, something that I do before almost every workout. Start off with some shoulder dislocates with the band. Make sure you can get uh, some flexibility in the shoulders, warm up the joint. And obviously, you're supposed to keep your elbows straight. But he's only four, so he'll learn. He'll get there. And uh, this is especially good for doing squats, making sure that you have the flexibility in your shoulder joint. But it's good to warm up for even deadlifts, just making sure your shoulder joint is nice and warm. And then right after that, always do some band pull-aparts, trying to make sure, again, rear delts are activated, the traps are pulling back. And since for most lifters, we're, we tend to be anterior dominated you know our pecs are overdeveloped and our anterior deltoids are overdeveloped so you get that shrug look where you're, you're bending forward kind of like a gorilla so this helps to really work on that just get some blood flowing and counteract that type of movement and making progress on the posture but not quite there and he wanted to do some hip extension warm-up. This is something I normally do for deadlifts and squats. Obviously, that's not going to apply in a back workout, but he wanted to do it, so we're going to do it, right? There you go. Pull it up. Got it? Done warming up? All right, let's work out. Ready? All right, so here's the start of the workout. Going to do some pull-downs. And Ethan's up first. Pull it down. Straight to your chest. Back up slow. We had some technical difficulties here with the pulley. This uh, pulley system is kind of old and it likes to twist around on me. So that's kind of annoying. But I fixed him up and look at that. Without technical difficulties, he's getting that no problem. Nice easy reps. Working on those lats, getting some pull down strength in there. And my daughter does gymnastics right now. My son, he really wants to try doing that. And before you go knocking gymnastics, know that I support my kids no matter what sports they want to do. And gymnastics is really great for developing all sorts of strength. And it's really awesome. They can do some awesome things. So I'm trying to help him start working on some upper body stuff because they're going to do rings and all that. But here I am, started off, uh, starting off light. This is just 120 pounds. Again, trying to really focus on feeling the lats. The lats are something that I have really been unable to develop any sort of mind-muscle connection. And that sounds very bodybuilding type speak. But it is important, I think, just so that I can make sure when I'm setting up for the bench or when I'm getting ready to pull on the deadlift that I can actually feel the lats contract so that I know I'm locked in. That's something that you really have to be able to feel to know for sure that it's working. And put across the bar now, sitting down. Unfortunately, I was a little bit too high on this, so I wasn't really doing much. But went up here to 150. And what I did in this workout is ramped up and then did a drop set. And I'm going to go forward, uh, fast forward some of this. Because we don't need to see all the pull downs, right? All right, so went up to 150 on here, and the plan was drop 15 pounds each time. Just try and go as many reps as I can in the, your normal drop set. And actually did start feeling the lats a little bit in this, so that was good. But still not really feeling like I can control it. It's just after enough reps when it gets heavy, I can finally feel a little bit of fatigue. But I'm not getting very much when it's light. So went in, did this pretty easy. Didn't get very many reps. 
but that's to be expected. Now this is something that I wanted to try and do. I saw somebody doing this. It's similar to a face pull, but I can't pull up I like a face pull due to my rotator cuff. So I just wanted to pull straight from a high pulley as opposed to keeping my elbows way down. Unfortunately, I did not check whether or not the pulley cable on this particular rack was designed for that. And I heard some terrible sounds went up there and realized that after I changed the weights, it was actually tearing apart the cable. So it was started fraying, messed it all up. And that's unfortunate. Luckily, I did have a spare pulley that I could throw on there, but I didn't want to mess it up. So I went to my coat rack and started doing it here. So this is a different angle. Um, the first one, I did 50 pounds. This is 70 pounds. Wanted to try it. And you can see there, it's a, a quite a bit different angle from your bent over rows or your cable rows because you're starting from a little bit higher again like a face pull would be and then you're pulling it to the bottom of your chest and I really did like these really felt them in the rear delt and this is a range of motion that I definitely have not done any sort of work on so set two here I went up to 90 pounds and unfortunately what was happening here is it was actually pulling me forward and then it was pulling the machine up so got to figure out some way that I can stay stable without making my body move a whole lot because then you're just gonna end up cheating and that's not the the purpose of this movement and uh, this is just another angle so you can see here now um, from the back my elbows definitely look a lot higher than they are from the side but this was back down to 70 pounds because I felt I had a little bit more control and trying to get some hypertrophy in there. So it's not necessarily something that I'm going to go heavy. And it is something that I just wanted to try in the movement. But I wasn't really feeling it in the lats at all. It was all rear delt and quite a bit of trap activation. But definitely felt it work more than the low pulley for me. And then one thing that I wanted to try right after I finished that set is what happens if I pull down? And this is the first time that I can truly tell you I have ever felt something hit my lats directly and almost completely based on the lat movement. And I wish I had this from the side, but I did this one. So the first rep is showing the normal way and then I was seeing well how would that compare you can see I'm alternating there and definitely this right here is what hits the lats so you kind of come down and then pull back and uh, I'm still only using 70 pounds here but this I think is something that I'm going to have to keep throwing in there uh, definitely gonna have to figure out how I can move up in the weight without me getting pulled forward or the machine tipping up I don't want to bolt it to the floor and since my pulley and the other system the rope cable was all messed up I decided to try and do the band pulley and you can see here see how different that range of motion is and I'm not getting anywhere near the range of motion that I wanted as I've commented before with the big belly it kind of hits I'd like my elbows to go back at least another five inches maybe six inches but there's not really much I can do with that cable set up and that right there was 140 pounds and I really felt like that was doing nothing so I went back there and I threw on another 90 pounds bringing it to 230 pounds now the most annoying thing about this particular apparatus and even my other pulley system now is I had to use my extension chain to fix the other pulley. So now I gotta get really really close, which I'm not a big fan of. And this one really have to drive my feet into the machine the entire time or it's just gonna pull me or pull the machine forward and that's not gonna be beneficial. So again 
This is 230 and it's definitely doing some work. However, the range of motion is tiny. And I just decided to go ahead and do one more set. And again, not really happy with the range of motion. But at least in the front, I'm, I'm really extending and getting a full stretch in the back and contracting it back as far as I can until the pulley hits the bottom of my stomach. And that's all you can do, right? And as my rotator cuff is still messed up, I'm trying to do some arm movements. So, been a long time since I did skull crushers. And after this, I can definitely tell you guys that I am 100% out of practice. And uh, you'll see there, I'm about a little bit less than an inch away from actually touching my forehead. The 35 pound plates that I have on there are just a little bit too big to make contact with my head without hitting the floor. And this is only 85 pounds, so just wanted to do one set, get some blood flowing in there, get some reps in. And honestly, I have no idea what is going on with this music right now. Uh, <laughs> without Glenn, I decided that I needed to have some music on. And I decided, well, I'll just change the weights. I'm sure that this song will get better and it'll get heavy, right? And I'm changing the weights, waiting for it to change. And just keeps going. Just keeps going, being super obnoxious. But I'm convinced that, hey, this song's going to get better. going to get a good, nice, motivational song here so that I can work out. And my CD player, it's a really, really old piece of junk, doesn't read burnt CDs. Unfortunately, the only CDs that I have are burnt CDs. I don't have an MP3 player, and my Wi-Fi does not reach my pole barn. And you'll see there, look at that. And no matter how cold it gets, we're always going to leave a sweat angel on the ground. I'm just sitting there back there waiting for the song to get better, right? Up to the weight, this is 105 pounds now. I just make sure that you grab the grip where you're supposed to. I had one time I grabbed off center, so you'll see there I was looking back just to make sure I got it right. And now, do you guys count the lift off? I don't count the lift off where you just pick it up and get it into the position, but it is similar to the same movement. So I'm just curious if you guys count that as part of your lift or if it does not count at all. And I'll tell you right now, the only thing going through my head is I really do not like this music. I can't stand it. Let's go and listen to something else. And it's really hard to actually push yourself through a set when you're so distracted. So I don't advise it. Make sure if you're going to put music, you know what's going to happen and what's going to play. All right, and this is the second to last set I do of these, the last full set. And this is now up to 125 pounds on Skull Crushers. And really disappointed with how few reps I get here and how difficult this was. Yes, it's been a long time since I've been able to do any pressing movements. Yes, it's been a long time since I've done Skull Crushers directly. But to only be able to do those few, I was just terrible. I mean, I got two, and then I decided, well, let me see if I can do something like a close grip bench. Well, that wasn't heavy enough to do anything. So I went back and just did a negative and was really disappointed in myself, I'll be honest. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and try this again. See, can I do more than two reps? Because that is pathetic. And it would definitely imply that all my pressing has gone down, which is disappointing. First rep there. Second rep. And 
and no, just can't do three. So that was a huge disappointment, guys, I'm not going to lie. Definitely have lost quite a bit of tricep strength from not being able to press for two months. And uh, there's no excuse, really none, for not keeping up the tricep strength. So definitely going to have to be making sure that I'm hitting the triceps. And uh, the hypertrophy work that I've been doing is not enough to keep the strength up. So I'm going to have to alternate between keeping the size going and keeping the strength up. So drop this down to 105 again. I'm just going to try and finish this up. kind of funny because it's no way at all to just pick up and throw around but I'm going to do bicep curls with this because that makes sense so starting off with some really close grip this is uh, 62 pounds I thought my easy curl on this one was 15 pounds I have three different easy curls but I decided to weigh it and this one comes out to around 12 pounds and I'm not going to count the black collars. I have no idea what those weigh. But we're just going to say 62. I'm trying really hard to make sure no hip swings, no back swings in these. Just do them as strict as possible. And with that close grip, I really felt like my stomach was getting in the way. And it didn't feel like I was actually working the biceps much. So I went ahead and went out, up the weight up. This is now 82 pounds. I'm still able to do that with very minimal body movement, which is nice, but definitely starting to feel it, and after doing all of the back work that I did, even though it's not necessarily your main mover, your biceps are worked a lot, I'm definitely starting to get a little bit of burn and fatigue in that and decided let's go ahead and throw 102 on here and as you guys know uh, bicep curls are not something that I do very much of so I was really hoping to get quite a few reps here and first three felt easy and just hey look biceps don't work anymore I have nothing left tried it twice and uh, right away here it started bothering my forearm that's one of the reasons that I hate doing curls from where I broke my arm it just starts really flaring up and giving me pain so I decided let's just drop the weight uh, let's go hammer curls because that doesn't bother me through the, uh, the hammer curls here with 40 pound dumbbells and unfortunately same kind of thing happened here hey look my biceps quit working definitely cheated on that last rep using my back to get the weight up and I just said you know what forget it Let's, let's lay down and try and do some uh, tricep extensions with dumbbells. And they look uneven there. I'm not too worried about that. I wasn't gripping them quite the same way. And since I'm not doing a bar, it doesn't really matter to me that much that they're uneven. And my right arm is definitely lacking the range of motion due to the rotator cuff injury. But I was really surprised that I only got these few reps because this is normally something I would just do a burnout. And apparently the skull crushers destroyed my triceps. So to finish this off, wanted to do uh, kind of a, a last superset, I guess you would call it here. We've got 105 on the skull crushers. So I'm going to do as many of those as I can. And then I'm going to go over to the dumbbell extensions as soon as I fail. You guys thought I was going to go for another rep, didn't you? Yeah, no, that was just me psyching myself up to set it down. I only have two pairs of dumbbells in my gym and they're both from my brother. 
you can see there, that was just terrible. That was really hard. So I decided I'm going to go to some close grip bench and just get as many reps as I can in. But anyways, uh, I have a 40 pound pair and I have a 35 pound pair and the 35 pound pair is inside. So using the music to channel some extra energy, get those reps in as many as I can. And everything that I have at this point is just gone. My triceps have failed me. Definitely going to have to build some endurance and strength back up in the arms. And I have no idea how this is going to translate to my benching because I haven't really benched in about six months other than trying to see if my rotator cuff could handle it and it keeps telling me no. And I wanted to give the hammer curls one last try, see if I could actually handle any. You see now I'm getting a little bit more momentum than I was before. And yes, I could just do cheater curls, and I end up doing some, but I was just done. At that point, there's nothing, no reason to keep going. I don't even know what I did there. Ignore that. Chicken breast, potatoes, no gravy, just some butter, and carrots, and some water. Alright, that's it. Take it easy, everyone.